Hello there, how's it going? Welcome back to Our Seeing Around. Now this rather sad looking motif is actually a legendary Yokomo racing chassis um, underneath what used to be a Ferrari F50 body shell which is very much seen better days. Now this is actually a Yokomo MR4 TC Custom. Um, now to a lot of people that'll mean nothing if you if you're relatively new to the hobby or you or you're just a basher and you've never done any sort of competition racing or especially a uh, competition racing to do with uh, tuning cars that'll mean nothing to you but it's like if you say Peugeot 205 TTI or Citroen AX GT people who see that and aren't really familiar will just see cheap old plastic french hatchbacks but people who know especially with the AXGT, people who know what these things are, have it, they see it in a completely different light and you get a big respect. This is exactly the same thing. To those who were involved with, with competition touring car racing, especially through the sort of late, mid to late 90s, this is a legendary chassis. Um, I think they have one remaining body clip off. And it's pretty scabby looking underneath. Um, the drivetrain's pretty good, I'll, tell, I'll go over that in a minute. Um, it's obviously had a whack on the rear end, as you can see. It's got some rather yee-haw cowboy cobbled together electronics going on. That was me, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah, there's there's some work needed there. Basically, um, for those of you who have been with the sh channel for a, for a long time, will know that I have a history of uh, work, ra racing, competition, uh, national and club level competition and back when i was but a lad sort of 2003 2004 um yeah i used to race and uh this was old then it was sort of towards the end of its serviceable life not this particular chassis but the mr4 tc custom as a, as a competition car was getting phased out by the mr4 tc special which replaced it and um, i was actually uh, racing a lossy back then but while I did the racing, my dad, who supported me at the time, he liked to sort of wheel and deal with the different touring cars. He'd buy them, uh, repair them, upgrade them, pass them on, and other stuff. I think at one point we had uh, fourteen different race touring cars. Some of them, some of them actually, to be fair, some of them weren't race spec, but most of them were. Um, and this one we bought. I can't even know. Where, I can't even remember where we got it from. And uh, I ran outside as a, as a street car for a while. And I, it's, not, it's not actually that particularly good as, a, as an outdoor street car purely because in here you can see the, there's the, the, I don't know if the light will pick up, but there's the, the spur gear. Well, I'll get the hair out of the way of the camera there. There's the spur gear and pinion in there, and stones can quite easily get in there, especially from the gaps here or whatever, and, and jam that up. And it's quite common for it to get jammed up, and I used to chew spurs as a, little, as a result. So not really a, a, a street car so much, but as a race car, this thing was superb because um okay it gave all the adjustability that you needed back in the day you know your camber your caster your anti-squat kick up it was all adjustable ride height and everything and uh, balance front to back all that was adjustable of course it was because it's a race car but more importantly some race cars and my my, my lossy triple xs um is the same some race cars um have this sort of forgiving handling if you don't get the setup right if you are uh, struggling to get the setup spot on and you can sort of go back to a, a almost everything type setup a sort of jack of all trades setup not too stiffly strong not not, not uh, stiffly sprung not too soft uh, not too aggressive but yet not too sort of lazy um, and this sort of middle ground setup some cars you can do that and they'll, they'll, they'll be okay you'll get away with sort of mid pack running and you won't be left behind but you won't be charging near the front either and this is one of the cars that really gets away with this um, you know, um, and another thing that's good about this car is, unlike my lossy, my lossy is one of these ones that again you can get away with that, but but you can't just stiffen the lossy up, and um, with really stiff suspension on every single uh, surface type and hope to get away with it. It doesn't work. It doesn't generate natural grip. It doesn't generate the natural traction enough to get away with that. This car dud, dud, dud. This car dud. This car did. Um, it was a sort of a characteristic of a Yokoma that you could literally stiffen it up and let the tyres do all the work and, and it would work. Um, 
you know, if, if you come, if you compare that to something like the something else I used to own, which was an HPI Pro Four, which was actually a newer generation car than this and my Lossy Triple XS, and to be honest, had a better ultimate potential. You know, it was if it was bang on and you got this the setup absolutely spot on, it would turn lap times that these two couldn't match, and it would really, you know, it was a seriously seriously fast car. But that, if you didn't get the setup right, was a bitch. I mean, it really did not forgive anything but a perfect setup. And as a result, it wasn't as much fun to drive or whatever. So, and then your your results would be going up from there. You'd one one day you'd be on it, and people without the Pro Four, because the Pro Four was a new thing, just just as at the end when I stopped racing, um, they couldn't touch you. Um, and then the next week you'd be getting slaughtered. So, this is not like that. This is a great car. Um, yeah, so we had this, and I sold it to a friend of mine, who also started doing, doing the, the, the competition, uh, competition racing. He had it for a while, decided to get himself a lossy like mine, and the lossy, uh, which is over there, uh, I'll show you actually. It's not actually a full chassis anymore. Basically, we sold that to a guy called Douglas, and then he then bought this. Which is not actually a lossy anymore. It's sort of sixty, maybe seventy percent of a lossy chassis that I've just sort of cobbled together to to display this Mercedes one ninety body shell. There is no touring car left under there, and in, in fact the chassis is knackered, like completely broken. So that's not really a car. It's not shell for for sure because it's not even a, a real car anymore. Anyway, we sold that to him as well, or he bought it from someone else. I can't even remember. And then a few years later, when I started that that racing that I, I did again, um, again. People who are familiar with the channel have been here a long time. Some of our earlier viewers will remember we used to have a sort of budget for fun touring car racing scene going on. We not we don't do that anymore. But that again, because because I got back into that, I bought this back and bought that back, that over there. Um Yeah. So we just got back into it and I, I decided to rebuy this. And and since then it's actually been in the hands of Rachel, my girlfriend. She sort of Took this one over. This is her car now, um, but because we haven't done it, it's sat here. She walloped the wall. Difficulty. What the woman did is she smashed the wall with the back end, and there it is. It's broken. And since then, it's sat at the bottom of a cupboard, gathering dust. So I want to get this car sorted now. I'm a bit uh, 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 torn about what to do with the equipment on it. This is a P2K2 Pro, which is a brush 27 turn racing motor. Again, if you were back uh, racing back in the day, that is a legendary motor and you'll remember that. Can't even remember what this speed controller is. No idea. Could be the one that was with my... No, it's not. Never mind. I was going to say it could be the one that was in my Lossy Triple X SCT when it was new, but it, it isn't. I'm not even sure. And it has this old 27 megahertz radio system. Now I don't know what to do with the um, the electronics. I really don't. Uh, perhaps some of you guys can 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 do some suggestions. Do I keep it sort of retro themed and keep the brushed power, um, or do I remove that and go for a, a sort of budget seventeen and a half turn brushless system? Because um, if we ever do start doing the the, the racing again, the sort of comp the, the competition the non-competition fun race club stuff um we were thinking about doing brushless again in the future because brush motors just they, they just give up after a while and it's getting more and more expensive to look after brush motors so um yeah well, we'll see what to do with that same in the electronics and again i'm talking about, uh, about the radio system i mean it is it's really scabby it's all taped up i, I mean i'll whatever happens I'll, I'll sort that out but um do i keep the retro feel with the the 27 megahertz for the long aerial or do I just go for 2.4 because I'm going to have to get a new shell and it's, it's you know you don't really want a, a scabby old aerial poking out of a new shell you've got to put a hole into it uh, as far as for, as far as shells go I'm going to go for another red Ferrari not because I'm obsessed with red or Ferraris but because this new home has become synonymous with red Ferrari shells so that's what's going to happen new wheels and tires the actual drivetrain is okay um, it's, it, it was serviced, I serviced it not long before Rachel walloped it in a wall, so the diffs are all good, it's got a new spur gear in it, I think the belt's relatively new but I can't remember, um, yeah, uh, it shouldn't be too bad, it's got lots of mismatched screws I'll need to sort out, and 
she's lost the uh, battery bar. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Very much doubt I can find another one. But you never know. You never know your luck. We'll have a look. Yeah, so just tune in if you like your old tuning cars. This was just a sort of, look, look what I've got. Look what I can fix uh, video. I'm going to have to get longer posts on the on the bumper here because it's been cut so low just for this shell. But it won't work with another one. Now I'm hoping to, to, to do this car some justice because it is a really a fantastic chassis. And uh, if you have ever raced one of these, or raced against one of these, or have any experience doing the racing, let me know in the comments or whatever. Let me know what you think. Any suggestions as well. That would be, oh man, that's... Top deck's got to be cracking it as well. Darn it. I don't have a spare top deck. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna try and do my best with this car. It might not be perfect at the end of the day, but, you know, when you're talking, this thing must be... It's over 20 years old. It's over 20 years old now, so... But it's old, but gold. It might be difficult to find parts for, but I'm going to try my best. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again soon, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, do this thing some justice. Yeah, thanks a lot. Cheers.